All right, guys, welcome back to the channel. As always, thank you for taking time out of your day to watch the videos. I really appreciate it. Today, we are talking about a very interesting PlayStation rumor that is once again beginning to make the rounds, and it has to do with a pretty small update coming from the official PlayStation Studios website, but this small update could have very significant implications depending on how you're reading into it. And there's no doubt that maybe some people are reading into it a little bit too much, but I have to admit that when I came across this and I kind of looked around and I'm like, you know, the timing of this, it's definitely interesting. So we're going to get into this. Before we do, do me a big favor. Be sure to hit the like button to help the video out and show it your support. And if you are new to the channel, make sure you hit that subscribe button as well. So the small update that I'm talking about, again, is coming from the PlayStation Studios website, specifically the banner that Sony has featured on the PlayStation Studios website. Now, it's not uncommon for Sony to make banners like this and have these banners featured all over the place. We've seen them plenty of times, but occasionally they do update the games that are featured on these banners. And people noticed that Sony made what seems to be a pretty significant change. The significant change here is that right now with the new banner, Death Stranding is now a featured game on this banner. And it is the only game on this banner that wasn't developed by a in-house first party PlayStation studio. And the game that used to be featured in Death Stranding spot was Concrete Genie, which is a first party game developed by a first party studio. And this has, again, led to a lot of speculation. People are beginning to wonder, why is Sony doing this out of nowhere? Is this potentially an indication that Sony has acquired Kojima Productions as a first-party studio? And it's created quite the discourse where there are people who are saying, absolutely, there's no way, and anybody who even remotely comes to that conclusion is out of their mind but then there are also other people who are 100 percent convinced that this is some type of proof that sony has in fact acquired kojima productions now what i want to say is that there is a little bit more to this and there are more aspects to this that i think may help you kind of decide for yourself what this may mean if it means anything at all. The first thing I want to point out is that the Death Stranding IP is not owned by Kojima Productions. The IP itself is owned by Sony. That is an important distinction to make because what that means is that Sony can do whatever they like with the Death Stranding IP. They do not need permission from Kojima Productions. So that could very well be why Death Stranding is now featured uh, on this banner. But with that being said, there is also the other side to that where people are thinking, you know, Death Stranding has been out for over two years now. And even if you consider the director's cut, it already released on Steam. It already released for the PlayStation 5. It seems a little bit late for Sony to just suddenly be adding Death Stranding to this banner. Like, why didn't they feature Death Stranding in this banner previously? If anything, it would have made more sense to put Death Stranding in that banner when Death Stranding was being marketed all over the place. So there is that, and again, that may be reaching a little bit, but when you think about it logically, it is a bit strange. The timing of this is a bit strange, and it seems a bit abrupt. And people are looking at this banner, and they're looking at every single game, and they're realizing that there's not a single game on here outside of Death Stranding that was developed by an external studio like Kojima Productions. Now, something else that people are pointing out is that on March 31st, which was just about two weeks ago, Kojima let everybody know on Twitter abruptly and seemingly out of nowhere that they are moving the location of their studio. And this did come as quite the surprise because there was seemingly no buildup to this. Kojima did not indicate at any point that they were moving their studio. So again, it just kind of came out of nowhere, came as a surprise, and it led to a lot of people once again speculating, what could it mean? Surely there's some type of significance to this, and Kojima has yet to say a word about that studio uh, being relocated to an undisclosed location. So if you look at that happening on March 31st, and then you look at this banner update, it's within a very close proximity, yes, this is what people are going to look at, and they're going to come to an, a conclusion that potentially 
this could be a sign that the reason why Kojima Productions has moved their studio is because they were acquired by Sony and they're upgrading their studio or they're moving their studio to a location that makes more sense, something along those lines. And I think that that does make sense. That is an interesting string of things that have happened very close to one another that could lead somebody to think this. Now, something else we do need to point out with this conversation is that, okay, on March 31st, Kojima makes it known that he's moving his entire studio to an undisclosed location. And then on April 13th, we see that PlayStation Studios officially updates their banner to include Death Stranding seemingly out of nowhere when you would have thought that, hey, it should have been included there previously, but better late than never, I guess. It's definitely worth noting that in between these two things I just mentioned, there have been rumors that Sony is in the process of making some type of big or significant acquisition. I'm sure many of you are aware that about a week or a week and a half ago, there were just a bunch of insiders, a bunch of articles being written up about a potential acquisition and Sony's going to announce it. And you guys were here for the whole thing and nothing happened. And so this led to a lot of people just thinking, well, clearly this was all made up. Clearly this was all wishful thinking. And there's no doubt that that could absolutely be what it was. But again, you look at these things, you look at how they all kind of line up. You can't blame anybody for thinking maybe there is a little bit more to this than just it being simply nothing. However, we always do need to keep in mind that until Sony officially confirms something, anything we talk about, anything that we are trying to connect needs to be taken with a grain of salt and it would be wise not to get your expectations too high. Now, something else I do want to point out with this conversation is that very recently, I think it was actually today, we have the uh, insider Jeff Grubb making it known and he wants everybody to know that when it comes to the rumored Xbox project that Kojima Productions is working on, it is still a thing, according to Jeff Grubb. He revealed during his uh, podcast that as far as he's aware, as of a couple of weeks ago, the Xbox and Kojima deal is still on. He said that this is based off of new information that he recently got, not the information that he was told last year. And he goes on to say, does this mean that PlayStation couldn't have acquired Kojima Productions? Not necessarily. And that's all he says. Now, I want it to be known that Jeff Grubb was one of the individuals last week or maybe the week prior to that who was talking about hearing about a big acquisition that PlayStation was looking to make. Now, he doesn't say anything explicitly within this podcast claiming that, oh, I, I heard it was Kojima Productions, but he sure is quick to make it known that he got new information regarding Kojima Productions uh, recently. And this very well could have been the studio that he heard PlayStation was in the process of acquiring. And it is also interesting that Jeff Grubb, with him saying this, seems to be entertaining the notion that Kojima Productions may end up getting acquired by PlayStation Studios. Because again, you have to look at where all of this is coming from. Right now, everybody is basing this theory that Kojima Productions was acquired by Sony simply off of that banner change. So by Jeff Grubb coming out here and saying that, hey, it's totally possible that PlayStation could have acquired them, he's essentially making it known that there may be more to this banner thing than meets the eye. And, uh, you know, when it comes to the idea that PlayStation is going to acquire Kojima Productions, but how could that happen if they're working on an Xbox project? I also want to remind people that Hideo Kojima did confirm himself that he is currently working on two projects. And he did make it sound like one of the projects he's working on is something very different and very challenging. And when it comes to the rumor of him working on an Xbox game, uh, based off of what we know, apparently it's going to be a cloud-based game or a game that really leverages cloud-based technology, which certainly sounds like something that could be challenging, difficult, and uh, you know would take a lot of time to actually make happen. And so if Sony were to have acquired Kojima Productions or if they did acquire Kojima Productions, does that mean that this Xbox project would be canceled? I don't think so. I think that if anything, it would end up turning into like a 
Deathloop or Ghostwire Tokyo situation where Sony would have to honor that and Kojima would continue to make this game and release it for Xbox. But something that people are focusing on when it comes to what Jeff Grubb said specifically, he uses the word was. He says that this was something that I heard is still happening. And he, again, people may be reading into it too much here, but they're focusing on that because technically speaking, he could be alluding to the notion that maybe it could have been canceled in the past couple weeks, or maybe the talks fell apart in the past couple weeks or between the time he got that information. And now again, that's just very speculative. In fact, most of this video is very speculative, but nonetheless, this is what people are talking about. And this is something that a lot of people are latching onto. It's been a very slow a week and a half when it comes to PlayStation. They have been completely silent. PlayStation has done literally nothing, and they've said literally nothing. And so I cannot blame anybody for kind of latching onto this and assuming that maybe there is a little bit more going on here that we are not yet aware of. I completely understand that. And so the final thing I want to say here before ending this video is that when it comes to the idea of PlayStation acquiring Kojima Productions as a first party studio, I think it would be a great fit. Now, I'm not convinced that Kojima would want to sell his studio and be folded into any publisher. We do have to understand that he worked very hard for his independence and it was a struggle. Obviously, we witnessed the whole thing as it happened. But it is also worth noting that Sony was right there by Hideo Kojima's side. He was hanging out with Herman Holst, with Mark Cerny, you know, Guerrilla Games said use our engine, the Decima engine for Death Stranding, and clearly Sony helped Kojima out a lot. So it really wouldn't be the most surprising thing, in my opinion, if at some point Kojima Productions does end up getting folded into PlayStation Studios. To me, I think it would be a great fit but I don't want to make any assumptions. What I will say is that if there is anything more to this, I would assume we will begin to hear more about it uh, sooner rather than later. But that's going to do it for this video, guys. I hope you did enjoy it. I hope you did find it informative. Again, if you did, leave it a like. Subscribe if you're new. Hit the bell notification icon and feel free to share this video out on top of all that. But until next time, guys, take care.